everyone, it's Ross. In today's video, we've got some garden plans, orchard plans that are finally in the works. Things we've talked about now for a couple weeks. If you guys want to go back and watch exactly what my entirety of my plan is, we've described that using an orchard map. We did a little walk around. Um, in this video, we're planting some things finally, and I want to talk about site selection, why I've decided to plant things like my pears here in this location, why I'm even planting pears in this climate. Things like my persimmon tree here that we're gonna plant. We're actually planting two persimmons and what the plans are for the rest of this bed and why it is that I'm doing it here. Because we've learned a lot from our mistakes over the years and we're finally, I think, correcting them, having things in the right spot. Really saving ourselves a lot of time and energy that has been wasted over the years, I believe. So. What I first want to mention is that this raised bed is not really the greatest thing for me historically. I think raised beds can work, but you got to fill them with the right soil. You have to be feeding them quite often. Um, you have to be watering them quite often. For me, if I just plant things right in the ground, it's perfectly nutritious. The water content, because we have so much clay, 40 inches of rain annually, I don't have to care for those things. Whereas in a raised bed, I do. I just created myself more work for myself. Why do that? It doesn't make sense. So we're going to take out the sides of the raised bed, which we've already taken off one side, and I wanted to do this to show you guys what this looks like under here. And you can see down at the bottom, I would say in the bottom six inches, this is about a foot high, you can see roots. Well, where are those roots coming from? <laughs> well, they're all coming from these shade trees up here. Particularly this one behind me here is probably the biggest culprit. And by not having something on the bottom, which I don't really recommend either, but if I was gonna do it again in this location, I would kind of block out the bottom as best as I could. That way, none of the tree roots could get into this raised bed. Um, I mean, they're everywhere. Let's be honest. They really are everywhere. This whole bottom half of it is completely filled. And it seems to only be getting worse as time goes on. So what we're going to have here is a situation where this is going to come out. And all this soil is going to be dragged out over here. So I imagine I'm going to have a two different berms. We'll have a berm pretty much where this is already located. And then the top half of the soil is gonna, then gonna be moved over here, and we're gonna create a nice little berm here. And I think that really aids with drainage. We're already planting our trees a bit of a higher up, a bit higher up above grade than most people normally would. You can see this here, we planted both of our pear trees here a little bit above grade. And this is good for two reasons, but a couple reasons, but this is bad for one reason. Why is this bad? Well, if we're not gonna protect the soil and insulate the soil with something like straw or wood chips, these trees are getting gonna wake up a bit earlier in the season because the higher up they are above grade, the more heat they have in the early spring. And they can wake up early, flower early, and then come in a little bit later in the spring and get hit with a late frost, which would be really bad. But pears are pretty good about that, right? They're not ones to normally get hit with a late frost, so that's good. But also if we protect them with straw and wood chips, insulate the soil, it's gonna keep it warmer, but also colder, believe it or not. I know that's a bit of a contradiction, but it stabilizes the temperature in the soil so that these trees wake up more naturally a bit later in the season when temperatures have finally really risen for real. So that's really important is that we are adding that straw and that wood chips here to this location, but also some benefits to doing this is that we're getting rid of a lot of that water. I said we have lots of clay. You can see the clay. I mean, this is plain as day, this clay. Um, you know, there's obviously different colors to clay, but this is really what it looks like this really wet, thick stuff here, right? 
It's like, uh, I don't even know how to explain it. It's just really, it's like Play-Doh. It's like, it really is like clay. I mean, <laughs> that's the best, that's the best way to explain it. But essentially, because we have all that clay, we have all this rain, we're kind of getting too much water to these trees. And some of these trees, maybe even the pears, certainly things like cherries, maybe other types of stone fruits, don't like wet feet. I know for sure that less water equals higher sugar content, higher bricks content in a lot of fruits. So that's part of the reason why people like California and growers in California are getting such high bricks on their fruits. Yes, it's very difficult to grow things out there and they have to irrigate, but here we can kind of avoid that by just simply mulching and raising the, the planting site a bit higher and we can get a, you know, a couple more bricks higher than we normally would have if we're planting these trees level with grade or even below grade. This is all dependent on your climate, guys. Everything I just mentioned could be completely different where you live. If I lived in Arizona, I would plant this thing even deeper. I would plant it below grade. Now, why am I selecting pears for this location, persimmons for this location? Um, we're also gonna put in lots of plums here and apricots in this row. So pretty much in line with this fig tree here and in line with that stake is going to be all kinds of semi-dwarf uh, plums and apricots and they're gonna grow out this way and this way. So that, let me get into that before I guess we go on to a different tangent here. See how these trees are in the same hole? There's two trees in the same hole and one of these trees is gonna grow out this way and this tree here is gonna grow out this way. So when I put these other pears in the ground, which I'm kind of waiting for them to fall out, the soil is actually frozen. I can't really separate these, but we'll have two trees in this hole here, and then two trees where this stake is. And in total, there'll be six different pears here, but these trees in the back are gonna grow out this way. And I'm gonna let them get a bit bigger than I would for these trees going out this way because the way that the sun is orientated is at about 11 o'clock during the growing season, the sun comes around this shade tree here and then makes its way around and comes down and kind of sets over top of this house. So I've got most of the time of the summer about eight hours of, uh, eight hours of light in this location, but for the later part of the season and the earlier part of the season, we're only getting about seven hours, maybe even six hours of light, depending on the time of the year. So for one, I have to make sure that this tree in the back is not getting shaded out by the tree in the front, because if this side here is getting hit with the most sun, this tree needs to be bigger so that it can reach that sunlight. So we're gonna prune out these trees here. These are gonna be smaller ones that I plant in this side and the larger ones by this current time are gonna be planted out here. I'm also gonna be pruning these a bit harder. So the tree on the, the left side here, I'm gonna cut back harder than I would on the tree on the right. Um, some other things I wanna mention is that, okay, pears can actually handle about six to seven hours of light and still fruit pretty well and still have a decent fruit quality. So. You can grow, even though we don't have full sun here in this location, full sun's eight hours, we're still able to get a decent crop and good quality pears off of this, off of these trees. The same thing with plums. I wouldn't necessarily do this with apricots, but you could certainly grow plums in a, a lower light environment. Um, you know, there's gonna be a lot of thinning out that needs to be done, right? A lot of thinning out of the fruit, but also a lot of thinning out of these these branches. I don't want crisscrossing branches. I don't want branches growing into each other. I don't want branches, if it's this tree here, growing this way. I want all the branches to grow out this way. So we really need to pay attention to make this work. And this is not something that I would recommend for every new grower, okay? So if you're a bit more fine-tuned with this and you're somebody who's really gonna pay attention to your trees, you can make this work, right? Instead, you know, if you're new to this, why not just plant one, one plum tree here in this location rather than eight plum trees and you'll be fine, right? Forget about the apricots. 
You know, if you're like, you know, you're new as well, put one pear tree here instead of six. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make this more widely available and, and kind of my thought process to you guys that are not just based off of my, coming from my point of view, but also from other points of views, like in other climates as well. Some other reasons why we're going to plant some pears and why we're planting, you know, uh, persimmons as well. Well, persimmons, for an example, are completely problem free. Nothing bothers them here. I have no problems growing persimmons other than maybe some squirrels or birds late in the season that may be here. But otherwise, these guys are such a joke and the fruit is so good that it doesn't make sense not to plant them. The same thing with my pears is that they're actually very easy to grow. There is some disease pressure that bothers them and that's really about it. But if you have an area that doesn't get hit with a lot of fire blight, you should be okay. Now, how do you know this? Well, you can look it up, see if you have fire blight in your area um, or where high pressure fire blight areas are. But essentially, do you have a lot of woods around you? Do you have infected pear trees around you? As far as I can tell, I don't have many woods around me and I don't have many pear trees around me. I haven't seen a single pear even a single flowering pear, right? You have to consider not just fruiting pears, but there's the ornamental pears as well. And to be honest with you, I haven't seen any. In the time here that I've been on this property, I've seen very little fire blight, if any at all. So I'm pretty much good to plant these pears here. Oh, another way you can figure this out is if you guys have uh, an orchard nearby, let's say um, down the road or maybe a couple miles away, see what they're growing if they're not growing pears then don't grow pears you know what i mean figure out what they're working and how far and what extent that they have to go to to get these things to work in their climate now what about some uh plums right because we're going to put plums and apricots here well plums and apricots probably should be in a location but i haven't really been able to give that i haven't been able to give that location to almost anything on my property is a lot of morning sun and the morning sun at least in different times of the year is really important for different trees specifically stone fruits apples even pears that's going to dry the limbs on these trees dry the foliage dry the fruit and you're going to have less disease pressure because overnight they're going to be all wet maybe from morning dew and then you want them in the morning when the sun rises for them to dry really quickly so that those diseases don't have enough time to proliferate and infect all of your trees and ruin all of your fruit. So for me, I'm really not doing this very wisely in terms of my plums. Um, but you know what? So far I haven't seen too much rot here. Um, and also I don't really have the spots for them. I don't have a great place that gets a lot of morning sun um, I would say the best spot is probably in this little location here and this is really where most of my garden beds are not my perennial fruit trees so I don't know we're gonna have a little bit of an issue I, w I would expect but we'll see what happens with these plums that's something you guys certainly should watch out for if you live in a drier climate you probably don't have to worry about this if you have a lot of disease in your area, again, figure that out. And then in this little stretch here, because this raised bed has basically nothing in it, we have a fig here as a, we're trialing this fig here to see just how high we can plant the figs. But this whole bed is now going to be raspberries and blackberries that we're gonna move from this bed over here. And we're gonna move them now into that location. And we're gonna have two rows of them We'll have a row here and a row here. And you know what? I'm going to cram those in as close as I can. But all kinds of raspberries and all kinds of different blackberries. Primacane blackberries, Floricane blackberries, purple raspberries, yellow raspberries, pink raspberries, and red raspberries. So we're really going to go nuts with that. And this will really eliminate this whole issue with a lot of the shade tree here coming up into these roots and really just wreaking havoc throughout the year. I also have some leftover wood. I don't know what exactly I'm going to do with that, but maybe I can find a use for this wood. 
And uh, that kind of concludes this video, guys. I think I've talked a lot about site selection. Oh, I guess some other thing I want to mention is that when you're digging up these holes, guys, and you get rocks, just throw them aside. You can use these rocks for different things. My, for me personally, I'm going to be using them to protect the figs, insulate the ground a bit, maybe even use them as a bit of an ornamental appeal. You never know what you're going to get digging up in these holes in different locations. Try to get rid of those tree roots if you can. Get them out of the way. It's really difficult to dig when there's a lot of big tree roots in the way. Um, also, when we come in here and we're done, we're going to mulch this area heavily. I've talked about this so much in other videos. Put some cardboard down. Put some mulch down. I don't care what it is. Just get it down. You, you will thank me. Your trees will thank me. It's extremely, extremely important to get down mulch or straw. Um, it's just never ending. I guess from an ornamental appeal, we're getting rid of this little area here that just came out in a weird way. Uh, I guess I you know, tried to be a little artistic with it as much as I could, and we use these little red blocks, which I hate. I think they're really ugly. Um, but maybe we'll come in here and really make this look nice. For the most part, though, it's just going to be row, you know, a nice little row going down here, a nice little row going down here, and a nice little row going down here. I don't really need to make this an interesting shape, but maybe I will. Otherwise, it's probably just going to be a nice little rectangle of rows of uh, different fruit trees. So um, we can come in here, though, and add in some different rocks, maybe some nice big boulders if we get them, some logs. I think logs have a nice little ornamental appeal. And try to make this look nice, right? Because we want to also feed our fruit trees, make them happy, put them in the right spots, have the right spacing, the right density here, right? This is a huge hugely dense area that I'm going to be planting in now so we're not you know we're trying to take up as less room as possible and plant as many things as we can in those locations um, but we also want to make it pretty so don't forget that anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this one we're gonna come at you guys with other videos coming soon I think on me planting more of this stuff I think I can get my girlfriend to come help me <laughs> and she can film me as we plant this kind of thing and that way you guys can see me as I talk. We can show you guys more different things and talk about the different areas that we're going to be planting in because we got to do this whole area here and there's a whole area in the front that we also have to plant into and we have the whole area over here by the wall that we're going to be putting in 10 different fig trees there in that location. So anyway. More to come, I guess, in the more recent times with the, the temperate fruits and planting and moving these things out and kind of tearing up this raised bed. So stay tuned and uh, please subscribe if you got this far in the video. Thank you. Please follow me as well on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We post all kinds of different content there. We also have the website. Check that out in the description. It's a nice little blog. We do longer form content and uh, yeah. Stay good, everybody. All right. Take care, and I'll see you for tomorrow's video.